Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the new rabbit hole, or at least the temporary setup. I had to borrow some vines from Apollo and Carl. Got a table for, I think, $3 from a thrift store. Not too shabby. The only thing is, I kind of feel like I'm being watched in this setup, so rest assured, I'll improve it over time. But in the meantime, you know me. You know I couldn't just stop doing my skincare trials, so somehow, in spite of moving, I found a way to cram in a brand that nobody asked for, but I have been so personally curious about. And that brand is a rather expensive spa brand where it's all about the textures and the feeling and the smell, the whole experience, by the name of Arcana. I feel like today's video is kicking it back old school in quite a few different ways. First of all, new setup completely, new cleared memory card. And also, I did a brand review, a brand trial based on sample sizes, little kits. How many of you have been on this channel long enough to remember that that's the primary way that I used to do with trials? Because it tells you so much about a brand, and combined with skin store sales, I only spent a total of, I guess a little bit over $100 to do this trial on, you know, products that retail for up to $77. Nonetheless, this is kind of a different direction in the year 2021. I have not done this type of skincare trial in a very long time. We've done a lot more affordable brands. We've done a lot of Korean skincare brands. To do a US spa skincare brand is different, but there's a reason. And that is this right here, the Cranberry Gamage. I bought this from Ulta in some kind of a sale and I fell in love. And this is actually a brand that wants you to buy their samplers. The basic five set here was, I believe, $87. Then I got 25% off. And then I also bought the Glow and Go Duo. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a PM routine using these products. And I will tell you all of my thoughts after using these for I lost track of time. Was it a month? Probably around that. You'll be able to see I didn't use everything, which is kind of a, a bit of a giveaway in terms of what I liked and didn't, but we'll talk about all of that in today's video. Keep in mind there are timestamps to each product in the description box below, as well as affiliate links. If you use those, it does help to support this channel. In fact, let's chat a little bit about the brand before we get into the video itself. So Arcana was founded in 1989 in Los Angeles, so definitely a bit of a bougie feeling spa skincare brand. They claim to be paraben free, gluten free, phthalate free, sulfate free, a lot of frees, no petroleum based products, PEG free, dye free, cold processed, made in small batches, Leaping Bunny certified, and also chirally correct, which is something I wanted to take a brief moment and chat about. First of all, when's the last time you saw a skincare brand pointing out that they are chirally correct? And this begs another question as well. Do you need to be worried about the chirality of your ingredients in your skincare products? I'm going to give you a really brief description of what chirality is referring to because I know that most people did not exactly love organic chemistry and this can be a very hefty ochem conversation that we just don't need to have today. But basically, when you're talking about chirality, you're talking about the configuration of molecular structure. Chirality is uh, derived from the Greek word for hand. And your hands end up being a really good example of chirality because when you look at them, you can see that they look the same kind of, and yet there's absolutely no way that you can overlay your hands and have them look the same. This actually does apply to your skincare ingredients. You can have the same exact molecular breakdown and yet a different configuration of the molecule itself in each ingredient in your skincare products. Now here's the question. How often is chirally incorrect a problem? And that's the catch, and that's where this claim of chirally correct is much more of marketing than something that you need to be concerned about. I'll give you a real life example. L-ascorbic acid is referring to one configuration, 
you could have d-ascorbic acid, but you won't because L-ascorbic is the structure that you need. So yes, it's marketing towards, I kind of can't help but feel that it's towards people who may not know that this just is a non-existent problem. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, I am going to show you my PM skincare routine using these products. Of course, starting with the cranberry gamage. Oh, I fell in love with this cleanser. I don't think I'm alone either because I know when I hauled this, quite a few of you said that you also loved it. It's made with diatomaceous earth and jojoba beads. So it is actually a, a good choice of a physical exfoliator. It's gentle. I actually think it's fairly gentle even if you were being a little more rough, but you don't need to be. With a physical exfoliator, you can certainly, uh, you know, massage it into your skin very gently as you can see, hopefully, that I'm doing. That is the way to use a physical exfoliator. No need to push and hurt your skin. Arcana says to use this two to four times a week. I just kept it simple on myself and used this routine that I'm going to be showing you in the evenings alternating with my basic retinol routine. So in the intro of this video, I talked about how this brand is all about smells and textures and beautiful skincare products. I am gonna tell you that initially I loved the smell of this. I wouldn't really say it's cranberry, maybe an offshoot of cranberry perhaps, but I still really enjoyed it. I thought it smelled good. However, my super taster partner absolutely ruined the smell of this for me. I'm gonna give those of you that love this product an out. I'm gonna put a timestamp up on the screen if you don't wanna know what she said about this. But I know most of you are curious. I know most of you are gonna say, no, I, I wanna know. I want to know what she said. What ruined the product for you? And I'll tell you. She actually really enjoyed this product, but she comes to me one day and she says, hey, do you use this? And I'm like, yeah, I use this. Do you like it? She's like, yeah, I like it, but smell it. I'm like, well, it smells amazing. She says, no, smell it. So I smell it and she says, you know that smell they use in porta potties to keep them clean, but it's a very distinct smell and you know it the second you walk into any porta potty. Why does she have to be right? Why? Why does it have to smell like porta potties? So I just rinsed it off. I gotta admit, I really do absolutely love that. I can see myself repurchasing it. It's not too bad of a price. Also, I've seen Ulta do 21 days of beauty types of sales with this for I think about 50, I think it has been 50% off, right? Or at least the, maybe it was, Maybe it was the wine oil something from Arcana was 50% off and we should have a 21 days of beauty coming soon. Oh, I hope so. I'm so ready for it. I'm going to go ahead and use the cranberry toner next because I don't like leaving my skin completely dry. We'll talk about this and then we'll come back to the other cleansers that I tried. So the toner is all right. It is really pretty. As you can probably see on camera, it has this pretty swirling effect. It has, tragically to me, the same smell. I don't think the ingredients list is necessarily the most impressive thing I've ever seen, though. It's pretty high in witch hazel, which isn't necessarily a terrible ingredient. And again, you know, I was thinking about how this brand released in 1989. In the 90s, listen, if you're new to skincare, you're probably not gonna believe me on this, but in the 90s, we actually just used 100% witch hazel as our toner. Mm, bless my skin. Bless my little dry skin in the 90s as a child. I, mm, mm -mm. And I kind of feel like that's where a lot of the stigma against witch hazel comes from. Yeah, you know, a 100% witch hazel toner is pretty darn astringent, but it can actually be an ingredient that is combined with other ingredients and can make a nice formula. At least in my personal opinion, and this has cranberry fruit extract, rice milk, white tea extract, antioxidant rich ingredients. By the way, this is from that eco-friendly kitsch set, so is the little towel. Did you all catch that for $3? I posted it to my Instagram. I hope you all got it if you were interested. It is so nice. Oh my god, $3 for this? We did so well. Let's chat really quickly about the other cleanser options. So this is the Golden Grain Gamage. This was in the Basic 5 Daily Essentials for Dry Skin set. Um, I think it's 
it's all right. I do not actually like the smell of this one at all. In fact, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but it just doesn't smell very good to me. And uh, I will say it's I don't think it's any more gentle, to be honest with you. It's made with oatmeal, but it still definitely has uh, quite a few uh, physical exfoliating properties to it. It's a little on the harsher side if you don't like physical exfoliants. Don't buy this, obviously. But this one right here is actually one of those dual physical and chemical exfoliators all in one. It contains glycolic acid as well. So it's all right, I guess. It just didn't end up being a personal favorite for me. I bet I'll still finish it though. I bet I will. I will say I forgot until just now how much I like the dual physical and chemical exfoliators on my hands. That works really nicely. Good for repurposing as well. But yeah, it's often a lot for my face since I do tend to be a bit more sensitive to glycolic acid. One more, two more cleansers actually. The white tea, whoops, almost dropped it. <laughs> The White Tea Purifying Cleanser that was in the Glow and Go Duo. This one is actually really high in shea butter. I expected it to be very hydrating, and yet I feel like this was drying, at least in comparison to so many of the other cleansing options on the market these days. The Good Molecules Rose Water Cleansing Gel, way more gentle. The Peach and Lily Cleanser, the Geek and Gorgeous Cleanser, all so much more gentle. Your skin does not feel squeaky clean after you use it, whereas this one... Hello squeaky clean, didn't need you in my life, why are you here? And then the dry skin set came with the kiwi cream bar. I'll put a picture of this up on the screen as it did not travel well. However, you know, realistically speaking, I do like cleansing bars. It's less plastic waste and it can be done in a very gentle way. That's what I expected this to be. Glycerin, coconut oil, palm kernel oil, castor seed oil, safflower seed oil, all those oils at the beginning of the ingredients list, and yet I still felt like it was drying. Okay, this is a nighttime routine, so let's move on to the gentle solution. This is another exfoliating product. It's a serum with glycolic and lactic acid, so more of what I was thinking about in terms of, you know, how, how many skincare trials have we done on this channel at this point? It's a lot. What I was thinking about is that this brand must have stood out tremendously when they first released. We have two AHAs, seaweed, just a, a short ingredients list overall. I mean, it doesn't look terrible. It does still feel a little bit dated to me in terms of, you know, not mentioning what the percentages of those actives are and having witch hazel pretty high on the ingredients list and yet you know i would love to be able to travel back into the 90s and see what people thought when they tried this brand then but i guess what i'm basically saying now is do you need to spend how much is this at retail it's up on the screen do you need to spend that on an aha serum in the year of our lord 2021 probably not feels surprisingly heavy also. I know that it's made for nighttime usage, so that doesn't really bother me, of course, but yeah, it's kind of, kind of sticky. Can you see that it's sticky? We'll follow with the Peptide Hydrating Complex Moisturizer, which, again, peptides in the 90s, unique. I will say I did not enjoy using this moisturizer during the day, even though that's what the set recommends. I felt like it was kind of hard to massage into my skin. It definitely is a bit of a heavier moisturizer. Dry skin types rejoice, I guess, except that there's just more cosmetically elegant formulas on the market these days. I talked about some of them in my recent empties videos, that Primera moisturizer. Ugh. It just doesn't take all of this buffing into my skin that you can probably see I'm having to do with this moisturizer. Take one down, pass it around. By the way, it takes 17 minutes to sing that song from 99 to zero bottles. Not that I would know that, of course. Look, the drive here was very long. My skin feels quite heavy right now, I must admit, but also I can't complain about the results. I do have some breakouts going on. I break out from stress. As I said before I even moved, it was inevitable, but I gotta say my skin does look good 
overall. I actually want to end with the Desert Mist. Just so you know, this is a product that is made for daytime use, but I don't think it's gonna hurt to use it now. I just really wanna show you how this works. It's not the mist that you would expect. Instead, you spray it into your hand and then you pat it into your skin. This product is interesting. I will give it that. I will say out of everything I tried, the two favorites for me ended up actually being the Desert Mist and of course the Cranberry Gamage. The Desert Mist is made to be a protective product and you're meant to apply it after your moisturizer and yet before you apply your sunscreen. Again, this is for daytime use. But if you look at the ingredients list, it's actually pretty short. What do we really have going on here? L-ascorbic acid, which acts as an antioxidant. Again, brilliant to pair with your sunscreen. We have some mineral ingredients, which are put there to protect against pollution. And an ingredient that you just don't see every day, deuterium oxide. So that's heavy water. Now, the thing about this ingredient is that there's not a ton of studies on this, but there are some much older studies, think 60 year old studies, that did show deuterium oxide may be helpful for fighting transepidermal water loss. Mm, a foe of all skincare enthusiasts. However, here's the thing, ultimately, even though it is a unique product, I don't think you need to buy it because there's a lot of other ingredient options. Again, in 2021, that will give you that same occlusive effect. So I guess I'd say it's an interesting idea, but nonetheless, it's one of those things of, but do you really need that? Or can you just use petroleum jelly at night? Oh, you absolutely can. You absolutely can. Of course, that would go against the brand's ethics here since they don't use any petroleum-based ingredients at all, but y you still could. You could. And that's it. That's what I tried from Arcana. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. This is certainly a brand where there are not a lot of videos at all on this brand, so I hope this video was helpful. If you are an enthusiast of this brand and have tried some other products or want to share your thoughts on these, feel free to do so in the comment section below. And that is it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Just so you know, Face Theory is going to be our next trial. And then I'm going back to some more Korean skincare brands. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you all next time.